Now let us study the third natural resource, soil. Let's recall what is meant by soil. Soil is a thin layer of material covering the earth's surface. How is soil formed? Soil is formed from the weathering of rocks. Question 2. What are the ingredients of soil? Ingredients means what it contains. So mineral particles, air, organic matter, water and living organisms are found in the soil. Now let us move on to the next slide. So we shall study the properties of soil. Color is an important property of soil. The soil gets its color as a result of the several processes. The color of the soil near the land surface is darker than the color of the lower layers. Soil may be of different colors such as black, red, copper, yellow, gray. The colors of the soil are useful for its classification. Besides, they are indirectly useful in indicating the several properties of the land. In this way, the properties of the soil such as its fertility, drainage of water, capacity to hold water becomes clear from its color. The color of the soil depends upon its texture and its organic ingredients as well as on the chemical ingredients like iron and lime. Organic means plant or animal remains. Now, let's try this apparatus. Three measuring cylinders, three glass funnels, filter, paper, water, fine sand, coarse sand, soil from an earthen pot used for growing plants etc. Procedure. Fit the cones of the filter paper on the three glass funnels. Fill the cones with equal amounts of A. Sand. B. Sandy soil. C. Clay respectively. Clay respectively. Place the funnels on the measuring cylinders. Pour one test tube of water into each of these funnels and observe how much water is collected in each of the measuring cylinder. What inference will you draw from this? So if you can do this experiment at home, please try this if possible. Now let us go to the concept of soil texture. Soil texture. Soil contains particles of different sizes. The texture of the soil is determined by the proportion of the particles of the various sizes in it. Following are the types of soil on the basis of its texture. Sandy soil. The proportion of the sand that is large particles is high in the sandy soil. Water drains rapidly through the sandy soil. It is easy to plough this soil but it is less fertile. This is because the particles of sandy soil are made up of a mineral called silicon dioxide that is quartz. These particles do not dissolve in the water and therefore the soil has very little capacity to supply nutrients. Second, silt. Silt soil. The particles of the silt soil are medium size. Silt soil is not plowable as sandy soil. However, it is much more plowable than clay soil. This soil contains a large proportion of organic materials. Its capacity to hold to supply nutrients is much greater. Silt soil is also called sedimentary soil. Third type is clay soil. In this soil, the proportion of the small particles is maximum. The particles of clay soil feel smooth to touch. Clay soil has high water holding capacity. Now in the slide you can see sand, silt and clay. The different particle size is seen here. In case of sandy soil, it is 0.05 mm to 2 mm. In case of silt, it is 0.02 mm to 0.05 mm. And in case of clay soil, it is less than 0.002 millimeters. So I hope you have understood the different types of 
so it's based on the texture now let us go to the next slide now here use your brain power why is it difficult to plow clay soil the proportion of the small particles is maximum and the particles of the clay soil are smooth to touch and has a high proportion of water holding capacity making it difficult to penetrate through it therefore it is difficult to plow clay soil second question why is it easy to plow sandy soil sandy soil has large particles weak structure due to less organic matter and large spaces in between hence water also drains out quickly through it making it dry and allows the plow to penetrate through it third question what is the water holding capacity of silt soil silt soil has humus so it holds right amount of water question number 4 what which soil is suitable for cultivation and why silt soil is the best medium for cultivation of uh, crops because it is more plowable it has medium size particles and it is uh, more plowable than the clay soil it has more organic matter and it has a proper amount of water retention capacity and for a proper amount of time and therefore it is suitable for growth now let us see the soil structure the structure of the soil depends upon the different shapes of the particles in it soil occurs in the form of columnar laminar granular as well as block shaped structure you can see four structures here in the slide also but more are shown here see first one is granular then the next is blocky see different types of blocks are there they have classified them as angular and subangular then platy platy is your laminar laminates then wedge are sharp shaped then you have prismatic and you have the columnar now let us go to the importance of soil structure <coughs> the fertility of the soil depends upon the soil structure the advantages of good soil structure are as follows roots get a sufficient supply of oxygen water drainage is good therefore the roots of plants grow well now let us see what are the various uses of soil first one is plant conservation to help plants to grow second water conservation soil holds water as a result by means of bunds and lakes we can get water for use throughout the year plasticity soil can be given any required shape this property of soil is called as plasticity because of its plasticity we can use it to make articles of a variety of shapes these articles can be baked to make them hard water storage earthen pots earthen lamps idols bricks etc are the articles made from soil so here you can mark the definition of plasticity that is soil can be given any required shape this property of the soil is called as plasticity now let us go to some useful types of soil first one china clay or kaolin it is white in color it is used to make crockery bathroom tiles tanks laboratory apparatus masks jars etc second is shadow soil it is whitish in color it is used for making statues and idols third terracotta soil this soil is red in color decorative articles and pots are used for growing plants are made from the soil multani soil it is used in cosmetics now let us go to the structure here what is given here to identify the different types of soils so here you can see 
the soil type here. So in this jar, you can see that clay is there, silt is there, sand is there. So these are the various types of soil testing. Now let us see here. Do you know China clay is an industrial mineral mineral found in the type of kaolinite. It is found in China and hence it is called as China clay. Upon heating, this soil acquires a glaze and hardness and therefore is used for making crockery. Now, soil testing. The proportion of the various ingredients of the soil can be determined by soil testing. During soil testing, the soil is examined for color, texture and the proportion of organic matter in it. Soil is tested to find out if there is a deficiency of any ingredients. Deficiency means shortage or less. And to decide what measures should be taken to remove this deficiency. The soil sample is collected for testing. It is dried in an open space in the shade for 8 to 10 days. It is then sifted through a sieve. Sifted means it is filtered you can say through a sieve. Two tests namely the pH and the electrical conductivity tests are particularly useful in finding out the characteristics of soil. You can determine the fertility of the soil in your fields with the help of different tests. Causes of diminished soil fertility. Soil, what are the causes? First one, soil pH less than 6 or higher than 8. 2. Low proportion of organic matter. That means dead plants and animals. Third, no proper drainage of water. Four, repeated cultivation of the same crop. Five, continuous use of saline water. Saline is salty water. Six, excessive use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Now in the slide here, you can see the soil testing methods here. So identify the soil type, the jar test. So here they have filled this jar with the soil sample and left it after 24 hours. It is left undisturbed and you can see that the jars contents have settled down into distinct layers. So you can see in the various uh, sand type, sand the percentage in the first jar is 25% clay, 25% silt, 50% sand, second one is 30% clay, 40% silt and 30% sand. Third one is 50% clay, 25% silt and 25% sand. Sand. So in this way we can test the soil. Now let us see which were the great scientists. The Danish scientist Sorensen put forth the concept of pH which is very useful for us in our day to day life. Based on the concentration of hydrogen ions. So how will you define uh, pH? pH is concentration of Hydrogen ions or H ions we say you can underline it. The, to determine the pH of soil, a mixture of water and soil in a proportion of 1 is to 2 is taken and tested. 1 is to 2 means 1 part of water and 2 parts of soil is tested using several indicators. Accordingly, soil may be found to be any one of the following three types. Acidic soil, pH less than 6.5. Neutral soil, pH 6.5 to 7.5. Alkaline soil, pH higher than 7.5. Now this pH is very useful for the farmers so they can decide which crop or type of crop they can cultivate. So they take their soil for testing. Now always remember, soil texture is disturbed if the chemical fertilizers are used extensive, excessively and that land becomes unsuitable for sowing. Crops should be rotated in order to maintain the fertility of the soil or land. For example, the fertility of the land decreases after a harvesting of wheat. Hence, leguminous crops like the peanut, moong, moth, bean, pea, lentil, bengal gram, soya bean should be cultivated to restore the fertility of the soil. Leguminous plants means these plants have root nodules in which nitrogen fixing bacteria are present which uh, make the soil fertile. Now we know that 
the World Soil Day is celebrated on 5th December to make efforts for soil conservation. So I hope you all have understood the properties of the soil.